And the instability, both are going together. So the perovskite is the most modern field at present uh, for new uh, solar cells. But uh, I don't believe that in the next year they will not replace silicon at present. Well, in spite of your invitation, I'm going to resist the, uh, the temptation to say something about uh, 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 units and the fundamental constants, except to say that if you don't know about this, then you should ask either uh, Professor von Klitzing or myself about the greatest revolution in units since the French Revolution. Mm -hmm. uh, but instead, I want to ask about solar cells. Um, so uh, we've continually seen improvements in efficiency and you, you, you showed us these things that are, I don't know, what, 46% efficient. Uh, what I'm wondering is, are these more efficient solar cells going to be cheaper in terms of cost per kilowatt, or are we better off using a less sophisticated technology that costs less so as to have more penetration into the market of, uh, uh, of, of renewable? Now, I, I'm absolutely sure that these tandem cells or these high efficient uh, cells will never be in the mass market. Yeah. So, uh, and I have the feeling after the silicon revolution in microelectronics also, silicon will be the, remain the dominant material. Uh, I'm not sure the Ketman Telluride uh, was the uh, other one because more adjusted to the spectrum and even it was a lower price uh, in, in your picture at least. Uh, but I don't know what are the consequences uh, if you have to deposit then the Ketman telluride uh, or selenite. Uh, so therefore, silicon, we have some experience with silicon. And therefore, I think in the next year, silicon will still dominate. So, so a few comments. I, I, I would agree with you that for the next couple of years, silicon is going to rule. Uh, Proskites have an issue, uh, two issues. First, the longevity. They haven't solved the lifetime problem. It degrades in the sun. But it's a very thin film technology. It's much lower temperature. And so it could, in print, and you can actually make them layered so you can have two layers, uh, not like the high-tech semiconductor three and four layers you were talking about that could potentially be 30, 30 32% efficient, real efficiency but they have to solve the lifetime problem. It also has lead, like catelluride, so you also have a, a recycling issue. So there are all these things, but it's, it's, it's on the laboratory small sample scale, now over 20% efficiency um, within four years from three. Uh, so, but, but they have many, many problems. Uh, in the end, price always will dominate. So it's the dollars per watt and, and you know, how much land space in it and you have and things like that. But for the first next five years, I think silicon's still going to rule the roost. Um, we haven't heard much this afternoon about solar concentrators, large mirrors focusing onto a tank of uh, water or salt to melt it. Um, are they obsolete technologies, or do they have a role in desert areas? L um, they're, they're not obsolete, but PV has really surged ahead. And so the one solar concentrators that seem to be holding up, first, the hot water heaters are fine. <laughs> they're used widely in Israel. They work. They're great. <laughs> uh, but for electricity, um, uh, using heat to get to very high temperatures, to have Stirling-type engines and focal points, uh, they're not the only ideal in certain specific geographies. And, and they, um, so it, but PV has plunged so rapidly that it's, um, one, no one anticipated really, uh, and I will agree with what you said, it's been constantly been underestimated how well PV has done. Uh, every two years, it's all of a sudden ahead of what you thought it would be. 
And so it is really plunging. So, and it's scalable. The, the, the concentrated solar uh, has to have an economy of scale, whereas PV can go from kilowatts. Yeah, they have to be large. Uh, solar thermal would be useful for production of, say, hydrogen or, uh, say, carbon monoxide from car uh, de uh, decomposing carbon dioxide or water. Uh, we have, for example, recently shown you can reduce the temperature to as low as 1,000 or 700 degrees by solar thermal means, which is easily practical. Uh, we can easily build uh, without big concentrators. Uh, I think this is something that is a matter of the future. Just now, people, many of us have done this. I think solar thermal is a thing for production of chemicals, including hydrogen.